Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today I'm going to show you something that didn't quite fit into a little dev update and that would be an illustration of the complete new flow of the game with the changes to the model and trim UI and what is possible with that. So I'm going to build a um, model series and show you what you can do now with changing years and cloning and such things. So let's get into it. So what is this about? Uh, I would say that we uh, first take a look. You can see a year changing up there when we change year here. And this will be the case for everything we do. Uh, and uh, the interesting thing about this is that you now can build trims and engine variants in different years than what is the model and family. And for that I'm going to choose, uh, let's see, where is it hiding? There it is, uh, the uh, not golf body and build a very basic first car which then becomes popular and people want to have more of it and then I'm going to expand the uh, model lineup with different variants uh, based on the same model but using different body variants and that should be interesting. So uh, let's first build a base model in 1975 and this will be based on the standard little one here. All right, let me uh, make a rough little design first. I think I'm now satisfied with the shape overall. I didn't change too much there. And now we are going to choose some uh, basic things for it. Uh, transverse. Now I think we are going for rear wheel drive, but some basic suspension things. Uh, nothing fancy in here and definitely not fiberglass. So steel and now don't forget to check your wheel arches. You can see those also on the chassis tab. Uh, once you have selected a suspension, don't forget that you get the tooltip if you deform it there. That is already working in uh, the current version of the game. So 235s, yeah, that's more than enough. Uh, it's looking weird actually. So for this base version, let's go with the basic stuff. The first fixture tab you have here will be uh, designing the template of this car and all the fixtures I'm putting on now can then later be copied over to the different variants and trims we are making. So I uh, better make proper design choices already. So I'm, I'm going to do this and come back when I'm done. And here we have a very basic and rather ugly little car. That will be our base template for all the various trims. And the first one of these we are going to create now. And automatically there appears the new trim as soon as you are starting designing it. And we are going to put a, a dark bluish red color on there. And a bit brighter, I think. Yeah, this is, this is really ugly and perfectly fitting for the 70s. A bit brown in everything you do. Very nice. A uh, rear wheel drive and let's continue on. For this first variant we are not er actually going to change any uh, fixtures because that's just the base variant and instead we are going to continue to the engine and I'm going to build a boring little four cylinder. Reliable, nothing special whatsoever, probably single overhead cam. Uh, do we want to build it? Yeah. We want to make this car a bit popular in the, let's say, um, not yet tuner crowd uh, that is going to grow up on this car. So we are going to build a lightweight and probably something cheap and nasty. Overhead cam to valve, that should be fine. And yeah, smaller definitely, much smaller. All right, let's finish up this engine. Before I forget, I think we are going to offer this car, this base model, in two different versions, a 1.6 and a 1.2 liter engine. So I upped the uh, engine family to 1.6 liters and then we can make a variant of that one in the same year with 1.2 liter via the family, uh, family bore and stroke tab. 
So, uh, let's do that. I think this is rather reasonable for the uh, slightly more high-powered version, almost 52 kilowatts. Quite a bit for a little car out of 1.6 liters. So let, let's go with this. It fits perfectly into 1975. Um, the 1.2 liter version will of course be a bit downscaled from that. So uh, let me name these things and then make the 1.2. I have now named the different uh, things and we are building the Golf as you can see. And this is the standard 16 uh, trim of the car. And we are all basing it on the uh, i4 single overhead cam 2 16 setup. And this is the S1600 version uh, we just tested. And now I'm uh, making the little one as well. We just clone this one for that. And go in here and make things smaller. And that would be uh, something around there. This needs to be pretty small actually. That's kind of tiny. Yeah, like this? Yep, perfect. So, 1.2 liters for the other variant. Let's see if we are still doing well on the exhaust. That is a bit too much there, I think. Uh, much better with this smaller exhaust, and otherwise, I think we are fine. Uh, we can do a little bit more on the um, ignition timing without knocking the... Yep. Perfect. And probably grab the tire? No, no, no not right. That's, that's fine. So, now we have uh, this version and that would of course be the S1200. For the standard 16, I think we are choosing very standard and quite low spec stuff. And there's no real concern for performance, but nevertheless, I'm going to uh, slightly optimize it for some kind of uh, resemblance of performance and no differential there in the not even in the standard this is the high spec version we're building right now and medium road and these look tiny really skinny oh well they they are wow now that's that's not okay it needs to be a bit wide I think 165s yeah that's reasonable and really ugly ones. Yeah, that's steel, old steel, very nice. So put those out of it and that should be good. Uh, maybe sticking out a bit too much. For the brakes we are going with something basic as well. In the front, yes, we can go for a one piston uh, solid disc option and it doesn't have to be too large so I think we're going with 250. That should be more than enough. And then in the rear we're going with drum brake and nothing fancy there either. Let's see if this is enough. Uh, we'll come back to this tab later, of course. For now, we just set it up like this. Then we have no under tray stuff. We definitely need to reduce cooling a lot. Uh, that is more than enough too. And then force, no, five, that's a five seater. Uh, this is our standard version. So we are going with standard interior, basic entertainment. Um, oh, should we go with standard? Ah, we go with standard. And then power steering. Do we sh do we go with power steering? I think in this one no. Um, and do we go with anti-lock braking system? I think in this version uh, yes. This is our highly advanced golf after all. And safety standard and then we are left with standard options here normal setup and a bit more ride height and that's it uh, it's a drivable car uh, who would funk it this is even a bit too sporty almost so let's see what we can do here we could up this a bit reduce camber a bit to make it slide a bit more and then Increase camera in the rear, more grip. Yay! There we go. And then probably get rid of the anti roll bar in the rear. Save some money there in principle. And yeah, that's uh, kind of looking decent. We have a pretty high drivability, a bit of sportiness, not too much. This suspension setup looks very delicate. 
Uh, very nice. And should we put progressive springs? Probably. Yeah. Yeah, kills a bit of sportiness there. Wow. Oh, maybe kills a bit too much sportiness even. Let's go with standard. Still a bit cheaper there. And very low cost overall. Production units is really good for a standard car such as this one. And very lightweight. And 10.73 liters with the new economy calculations. Should be decent enough for this one. And now we are going to build the year basic version of this one for that we are going to uh, clone this and select it and from here let's see that's the standard 12 uh, or base basic 12 basic 12 and in that one we put in this one all right so now we have that one sitting in there and let's see what it does in the trim. Here we are going for, let's see, um, we've better, better economy that is to be expected. Oh, I think we stick with four gears, should be reasonable. Uh, for the tires, yeah, let's, let's just go with this. We may need even less than that. Two uh, 155s probably. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. And then for the brakes. Oh, uh, we never checked that for the other one, but we see now that we were a bit underpowered in the front. I'm going back right away and, and change that. First, let's finish this one up. And in the rear, brakes were set up properly already, as far as I can see. Still no under tray. Uh, very good. We need even less cooling for this one. Uh, we still don't have implemented the, um, the cooling penalty for all the cars, so this one would have a bit more cooling requirement than a modern equivalent with that power. But we still have five seats, but this one is supposed to be dirt cheap, so we are going with basic basic and no ABS. And still standard, I think. Um, Safety isn't very expensive, uh, but let's see, this only weighs three kilos. Yeah, uh, safety isn't very expensive to put into the car, but will be expensive in the engineering costs. But you've already engineered it for the other car, so that wouldn't cost much more then. And let's put this in uh, for this setup. I think we are, because we are lighter, uh, we can recheck this one and then again kill the sway bar in the rear and put up the suspension a bit again to bottom could get the bottom out out of the way and increase this one a bit come on why is this one not going well oh okay yeah so more grip in the front um and then let's reduce it in the rear no that's we don't want to make it more sporty so up in the rear and down in the front yeah that's looking better so it's just as drivable not quite as sporty compared to the other ver version and we are going for the final tab see the stats and even lighter we are doing 9.7 liters per 100 kilometers uh, seems reasonable for that one too I think we might want to check on the engine and see if we can go even lower with this one so we take out a bit of compression here and that should do now we can up ah, let's drop that one down and instead reduce compression or, or increase compression by one and put this up again and no no knocking please like this very nice and now we should have even better economy yeah yeah that made more than a half liter difference very nice uh, we are going with this one uh, it cost us a bit of sportiness uh, got us a bit more drivability but that should be fine for this car and let's check again the steering behavior. Yeah, suspension setup, very nice. Brake setup, uh, yeah, how much brake fade? Zero, perfect. 
and we see we are beyond, uh, above the line which is the required one so now I'm going back to the um, standard 16 and check on its brakes and see if we can make it a bit better and here we go uh, why do I have no graphs ah there we are okay so one piston I had and we see it's slightly underpowered so we want to up this a bit and probably get more pad in there as well so yeah now we have a better braking performance didn't increase the cost of the car much and that should still all be good yeah very nice so now we have our basic two car lineup for the golf and now we are going to advance time three whole years have passed and this car has been quite a success but we want to expand into different markets as well and in order to do so we are going to build a, um, a new version of this car and uh, base it on the standard one but we are not going to uh, only advance the years we're also going to build a new engine for it so now we are hmm, let's see so this is this is the new new car like the upgraded basic version of the car and we are going to put a 1.4 liter engine into this one uh, based on the same engine family but uh, we are going to put a four barrel carburetor on it so let's see what we can do here with the uh, new S1400B we do have a bit more power for the base version and well, probably a bit higher efficiency as well we chose a four barrel carb here and from the success of this base model we have gathered enough resource to put a bit of research into these new carbs we are putting on there four barrel carbs plus two quality that should do nicely and still no um, problems with uh, too little performance throughput uh, so no performance intakes needed uh, I have adjusted the exhaust again and that should be all good now we are going to build a, a new basic 14 version of the car so the engine is already in there and let's see we can still go for four gears top speed seems reasonable the tires yeah yeah kind of happy with that we can increase the size in oh wait this is the base version we were on 155s before so no need for that but let's see what does it do uh, increases drivability it's still supposed to be a bit of fun driving it so uh, not quite as understeery uh, we are happy with this um, so this is basically a mishmash between the two previous versions but improved all around and now let's see uh, that is still a very decent brake setup and this is still a decent um, setup overall for the aerodynamics let's see for the engine power we don't need anything else there and five seats still we are going with standard and basic so this is our kind of compromise between the versions now we only have one new version of this one which is right in between the old two but improved and we still have no power steering and um, just basic standard standard yep sounds good and here um i'm kind of satisfied with this as well so now let's see um we are saving a bit on the economy again the four barrel comps are doing well and now we want to build a new version of this car a very much different one which wouldn't be possible in the game right now but in this closed beta it is the plan is to take this little car the new base version and uh, morph it into something else and that would be first clone it let's clone it and now that we have this one selected we can choose a new body type so let's go with a sedan first and as you can see flop, we have a sedan and everything stayed on there let's see if these are still on yeah they are but there is no door so 
<laughs> we actually don't need that handle. Uh, we are going to remove that um, right after. <laughs> that would be a funny thing. Like you're buying a two-door car and you still have the fixture from the other variants on there. It's like, what the fuck were they thinking? And now we have a really ugly boxy car but uh, very much different than the first version. Now I just have to give it a name and then we can put stuff into it. For the saloon I've also built a new engine which is very similar to the S1400B. Also put on the four barrel carbs and what I still need to do though is to lower the fuel mixture a bit and compensate the compression just like I did before. And now, nope, this is knocking. And now the car should be doing pretty well with this engine. And let's continue on. And whoa, the gearing is a bit off now. Let's put it up there. And do we want to have any kind of diff in the saloon? I think there's still too little power in there. That will be something for the 80s instead. And uh, we are very happy with the wheels still. And this is rather wide. Do we want to have a symmetrical setup. We can't even have that. Oh, the. Oh, this was a bit too large. Let's see. Yeah, that's much better. And. Is this a bit too little aggressive? Yeah, it was. It was. We definitely need a bit higher there. This is a larger car, and you can see this in the drivability. It has dropped um, a few notches there. It's just because it's larger and thus a bit diff more difficult to handle in the city. And let's see what the brakes are doing. They are still fine, but we did get a bit of brake fade because of the added weight. And that might be due to the rear brakes. Yes, it is. So we make them a bit larger to get rid of the brake fade. But as you can see here, we also need to increase the front brake aggressiveness in order to cope with the additional weight in the car. And we still haven't put anything fancy in there. Uh, well, that will probably never change. But <laughs> let's see. Uh, standard, basic. That's still fine, I would say, for this kind of car. The top speed estimate is good. Good. We don't need to change anything there, and we just need to re-optimize this setup. And we see we got a lot better cornering now, but we want to have even more grip in the rear so that we bring it down a bit. And that is done by a bit more camber. We would go for less spring stiffness, but that gives us a lot of bottoming out, so we are instead making it a bit harder. And let's see. Nope, they are both set up fine. And more grip in the rear. Yes, more grip in the rear. And that's all good. Less grip in the front. Bring it down a bit. Very nice. All right. So this is our big little car. It has all but grown up. And now I think um, we are kind of done with 76, uh, 78. But what happens in the 80s, you wonder? In the 80s, the designers are going back to the qualities of the very first model and they are seeing that there is potential in there to make a really fun little car. And that will be done by just cloning this one. And let's select it. And now we advance the year to 1980. And we call it the uh, GT. Mm, the GT um, J. And with this one, we are exploring a bit of um, sportiness territory. How are we going to do this, though? Uh, we definitely need an engine which is uh, more than a little eco-saving thing. So, uh, first up, we are going to modernize the design here a bit for this car. Uh, we can now, so let's shrink this one a bit and oh, the designers were really creative and now suddenly they have two lights down there. Ha! How insane! Who would ever have thought of this? 
And then we have the eyes a bit narrower to make it look more aggressive. And the grill, no. No, no, just, just a bit narrower overall. But we also want to have a bit of an extra grill to put in another line there. And that would be this one, I guess. Uh, make it really thin. Just a line down here. And going all the way across. Yes, very much aggressive looking in comparison. And uh, otherwise, they, they forgot about the rear. There's, there's nothing there. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, we choose this one instead. Let's get rid of the old one. And there's two exhaust pipes. Can you imagine such power? It will make as at least double the, the power with two exhaust pipes. And now I think the car is more than uh, prepared to, to get all the acceleration because twice the exhaust size is twice the torque and thus twice the acceleration. Uh, yes. So let's let's take a look at the engine. We are going to be basing this off of the 14. So we take the S14B and we are cloning that one. Select it and then we advance the year to 1980. And this will be also 1.4 liters, but rather more aggressive compared to the B version. So this is the S1400 Sport. This 1400S. Um, and let's see what we can do with this one. Uh, no, they are not that fancy to put anything else in there. But I think what they did is just up this a notch and make it able to rev a bit higher. Um, upping the cam profile always works and I think 55 cam profile is pretty pretty good choice there. We are going for an 8.5 compression I think and 4 barrel maybe go crazy and DCOE it's a twin? Ah, that is that is already too race. No. We, we're just keeping keeping this standard. So uh, now a bit more fuel in there. 13.2 uh, gives us a lot of headroom there and we use it by opening up the ignition timing a bit. And we definitely need more exhaust pipe. 57 there. Yep. Tubular headers sound good. Straight through muffler even better doesn't change much. Does it actually make it worse? It does make it worse. Uh, anyway, so uh, what are we going to do with this? We do have everything we need here, but we do need more revs because this is cutting off much too early. And let's see how far we can go here. 6,500. Not too bad. Um, I don't really like the low performance though. <laughs> It is more sporty already. Uh, it has a more aggressive torque curve, which will help the sportiness feel of the car. It's not really a fast car anyway. It just feels a bit, feels a bit better. So we are finished with this one, and it's already in the car. So let's continue on here. Wow, this top speed is amazing. Let's up this a bit, and now we even put a differential in there. See, uh, <laughs> shitty automatic locker. That would help the acceleration. Wow, we are doing a 10.7 from zero to 100. Uh, we could tune this a bit better, though. Let's see. Oh, five gears. Yeah, five gears. This is highly advanced stuff. No, we need more top speed, and we can go to 100 in third gear. Yeah, 10.5. Such acceleration. It's never been seen before. Oh, that was too far. 10.4. Ha, amazing. Okay, um, quality. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a bit split on the five gears there. That seems a bit too advanced. But anyway, uh, this one is getting nice tires. 
we are putting some uh, pretty shitty um, low quality sports tires on there just for the sake of it and now we can tune them better too. Some 14 inch rims. That's luxury. Yep, let's go with that. Whoop, make it larger. 75 and probably squared. Yeah, we go square. And sportiness is getting up there. If we put add-ons on there? No, it's supposed to be really cheap. So cheap and nasty. Let's go with this. Uh, we do need better brakes now. I think we're going for vented discs. We can up the size even more. This is still not enough, but we want to more, have more sportiness anyway. So now this is more than enough. And in the rear, <laughs> still drum brakes? I think we're going with the one piston. It's much too large. Yeah, 190. And pet type 30. Ah, this, is, this is complete overkill for this car, actually. Wouldn't have thought it, but uh, yeah, we're going with the drum brake, make it a bit larger, saving money, and make it more aggressive too. Should be good. Let's see where the uh, brake fade starts. There it starts. Yep, there it is. Okay, 0%. Perfect. Got a bit more sportiness in there. Feels good. And semi-clad. So now the car is going really fast. 163 kilometers an hour, almost. Uh, but we do need more cooling as well. Yeah, that killed a bit again. And even more cooling. No brake. Brake cooling, though. Uh, yeah, it's a two-seater, but maybe... Uh, not a two-seater, a five-seater, but... Uh, Definitely don't want to make it a two-seater. Maybe a four-seater to make it a bit lighter. Yeah, that works. That works. And then the basic interior. Yeah, let's go with basic interior. And still nothing of these. This is just a very raw car. And standard safety is all good. And now for the setup we are going with a bit more sporty setup here this is looking very sporty uh, we still could have oh wait this is bottoming out like crazy yeah that's much better the balance is better now with the drivability for sportiness um, and for this one no it's really cheap let's keep keep it cheap and now here we have it the the golf gtj and that's a really nice to drive cheap car you see it's not much more expensive than the other ones but so much more fun and less probably less practical as well and up to the 10.8 liters per 100 kilometers as well like the more heavy versions luxury versions of the car from 1975 and uh, yeah i think there's only one thing left to do the huge success and image boost of this car is uh, making the engineers think that before they they put out an update of the 70s, uh, 78 versions of the car, uh, they are going to build a Halo car to... Uh, oh, Halo, well, a really... Yeah, let's call it a Halo car. This is actually probably a Halo car for a really shit, shitty little box, but don't don't tell that to the, the others. That's... That's what, only what I said. Um, so, yes. So, 82 is the year, and 83, they are supposed to bring out the, the revised versions. So, we're going to clone the GTJ version of the car. And then, we are going to make something special. And this special will be this one. Let's see how many fixtures survive. Oh, looky, looky. This just transformed nicely. We can have the... <laughs> <laughs> the extra door thing. This this is looking like the old version, apart from this hole there. I don't really care about that. Uh, anyway, that's looking really nice. So uh, this is our new um, super little car, and we we try to to make something special out of it. And um, for that, I just leave the fixtures as they are, apart from this one. This one needs to go. Yes, go away. All right. Perfect. And what do we do? 
we probably take uh, the the 1400S. That seems reasonable to take. That's the most advanced engine we have right now. And we are going to base it on that one. So we are going to clone it, select it, advance the year to uh, 1982. And uh, now we are going to build a freaking race version of this one. And for that, we put in fancy things up the quality. There are not many going to be built, so you can afford the, the few pistons you, and conrods you need for that. Uh, not going to do anything with compression yet, but we are... It's, it's the perfect time. 82 is the perfect time for a turbo. So uh, let's put a turbo on there. And of course, I forgot the compression. <laughs> now let's... Put this one to 70 and now see what comes out of it. Our DCOE, we give it more fuel. And now we can put oh yeah, we didn't have an intercooler. That would help to have. Uh ball bearing, yeah, thank you. And mm, medium is good performance. Very nice. Uh the exhaust is, is really limiting. Yeah, now we're getting a bit of a curve there. Uh, still very low power. Mm, that should change. Let's see, a bit more cam profile. 70 seems reasonable. And here we have it. The uh, newly created S1400R. I made it uh, such that we get a whooping 128.7 kilowatts out of this little bugger. Uh, that is a lot. That's almost uh, what is this like 90 kilowatts per liter? That's that's a lot for that time and a Neat little turbo setup, but using the most extreme stuff um, after all it's it's not to be sold really so let's see what we can um, get out of this one in by choosing a few different things in the trim and definitely going for five gears. Geared diff and a bit more quality there and definitely a bit more high speed. So this is looking reasonable, but I think we are... Oh, nope. We don't need that much, but we are going to go faster to 100 kilometers an hour. And this time we are definitely putting on some better tires as well. Uh, Semi-slicks? Yeah, semi-slicks. It's not going to be sold anyway. So, um, nope. This makes two tiny tires. 195s is still a bit. So 225s in the rear. And 215s in the front. Can we make it square? Yes, we can make it square. Very nice. Uh, how much larger can we go here? Not much. Can we go even larger then? Yep. Perfect, perfect. Like this. And now we are going to choose alloy, these things here, and vent it. Two piston brakes in the front. Does it get better there? Nope. And vent it one piston in the rear. And we have zero brake fade, which is exactly what we want. And we do want even more sportiness here. So let's up these values a bit. There we go. Oh, wait. Better quality brakes in this one. Just make it smooth overall. We have a fully clad under tray. We already have a lot of downforce. Uh, well, it's just a little bit of lift, which means the car has a lot of downforce to offset the natural lift. And we can make it such that it actually has more than zero in total. It makes it much slower, but it doesn't need to be fast on the straights. It needs to be fast through the corners. And that's definitely achieved by this. So now we have a neutral and slight downforce on the front. This car needs much more cooling though. Like that. And do we need brake airflow? No we don't because we didn't have any brake fade after adjusting the brakes. But what we do need here is engineers that think about the aerodynamics a bit. And that's looking better. Yep. Um, let's see. So two seats. Basic. None. We do 
want traction control, you can always put it off, but we want to be cheating to get fast track times. Um, some basic safety to not look too bad. And now, gas monotubes and race setup. Yeah, you can see that it, the line here shifted to the right a bit more. Uh, right height 74, that is very low. Let's go with something slightly more reasonable, like uh, 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters should be fine. And here we have it, 40 sportiness in this little one. Uh, not too bad, but uh, yeah. Let's see what it does on the track to conclude uh, our little series. And then uh, let's look at the final list of models we've built today. Let's go around the uh, track with the Golf. And whoop, what did we get? Uh, I didn't look. Let's see. We do get a 132. It's still very slow, but it does pull uh, 1.27 Gs in the corners. Uh, not too shabby. Not too shabby. And a decent performer as well. Uh, definitely a good car to advertise for the more sporty segment you are aiming for with the uh, GTJ version of the car. And it should give you a bit prestige before you release the revamped versions of the 78 cars. All right, let's take a final look at the overview stats for our different models. Here is this little list of the uh, all the cars we built in this mini let's play to show off the new um, stuff which is coming in the next pa big patch to you. And that would be, we started out in 1975 with two versions and they were very lightweight and uh, not very comfortable or anything. Um, we, by the way, we haven't built any kind of comfortable car in here. That would be a missing one. Uh, you have to complete. And then the basic 14 came with a revamp and overall improved the performance and uh, desirability of the car. Then we had the uh, saloon and the GTJ version coming a bit later and now the halo car to prepare for the revamp uh, for the other cars. Uh, very nice, I uh, think this should conclude it and see you guys next time.